has a unique perspective of the city's criminal justice system. Stanley Richards has been incarcerated. He worked at the Department of Correction and spent decades trying to find alternatives to incarceration. Now he is leading the criminal justice nonprofit, the Fortune Society, where just this week they broke ground on an 82 unit apartment building in East Harlem offering permanent and affordable housing for people who have been formerly incarcerated. Stanley Richards is joining me now. Thank you for being here. It's good to see you. Good to see you and thank you for having me. Of course. So this project is called Castle 3. How do you really envision it uh, improving the lives of people who had been incarcerated? Well, the one thing we all know and we agree is that stable and affordable housing is transformative. Uh, our homeless uh, issue in New York City, the fact that 25% of the people who walk through Fortune's doors identify as homeless or unstably housed. How do you get a job if you're living on the streets? Mm -hmm. How could you maintain your sobriety and get mental health counseling and drug treatment if you're sleeping in the shelter, worrying about your safety and where you're going to live? And so Fortune Society, since 2002, has really been building out our housing portfolio to provide re-entry and supportive housing for people impacted by the criminal legal system. And so how does this model kind of differ from, you know, the traditional model of affordable housing that we're used to seeing? Well, one of the things we have done and we've learned as we engage communities as we built the uh, academy and then Castle Gardens is that what we heard from community members is that the community needs supportive and affordable housing as well. So in all of our projects, we have mixed use. So out of the 82 units, 58 are going to be people for people with criminal convictions and are homeless. And the remaining units are going to be for their community. And what we try to do is really build in affordable units. Many communities say, affordable for who? In this project, it's going to be affordable for this particular community because we'll be accepting people who meet the 30 to 60 percent AMI, uh, which is not really present mm -hmm. in many of the affordable projects that are happening. So right now these 82 units are not accounted for. Talk to me about the timeline of, of when the applications will open and when move-in could potentially happen. Yes, so we anticipate the project being completed in about May of 2026. Mm -hmm. About four months before the completion of the project, we will start screening and um, accepting applications. We'll be doing that through the city's portal, Housing Connect. And so we will be screening people who meet the income eligibility and for the 58 units who meet the homeless cr criteria and the criminal justice uh, criteria. The hope is that by the time we get our certificate of occupancy to open up, that by October, September, October, we would have people moving in and people could live in their new beautiful apartment. I want to talk to you about Rikers. You obviously have experience. You have been incarcerated. You have worked for the Department of Correction. Uh, what do you think about how the Adams administration has really addressed the problems that we continue to see at Rikers? Yes, you know, I'm part of the Lipman Commission, and we have been in conversations with the Adams administration and the city council. They recently reappointed us, uh, the Lipman Commission 2.0, to reexamine the plan that we have. I think we are all clear-eyed that Rikers Island must close. We must have a smaller, more fair and humane system. And we need to lift up those who work there and those who are incarcerated there and their families. And so as a Lipman Commission member, we are in constant conversations with the administration to see our way forward to closing Rikers and building a barrel based jail system. Our investigative report our Courtney Gross recently did a report on the dangerous conditions at Metropolitan Detention Center in Brooklyn. Uh, how would you describe the conditions? Do you think there needs to be an overhaul of the city's jail system? Absolutely. Uh, and, and what we've created really, if you look at who we're detaining, most of who we're detaining, it's taken significant time to get cases adjudicated. Uh, the average length of stay for cases are, is over 100, 100 days. And we were never, the jails were never set up for, to be operating like a prison. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have uh, end up doing. It also has over 50% of the people with mental illness. So it has become our mental institutions, and it was never designed for that. You couple that with the infrastructure that is dilapidated mm -hmm. and provides weapons for people incarcerated, the kind of conditions that officers have to work in. Today, it's going to be 92 degrees. Right. 
Officers and incarcerated people are working in facilities probably about 110, 115 mm -hmm. degrees with no air conditioning, fans blowing hot air, and those are the conditions that people have to live and work in, and it's not fair. We can do better, and we are working with the administration, we're working with the city council to close Rikers, build the borough big. Success with Castle 3 this far. Mm -hmm. Stanley Richards of the Fortune Society, we appreciate you being here today. Thank you so much, Steph.